Religion, a significant facet of modern life, strongly affects the connections between people. Sharing beliefs brings people together, but where do these beliefs come from? Why are the beliefs of some groups similar to others? How are they different? In learning about the Sami, I found myself asking these same questions about their culture. Could it be that their beliefs were in some way influenced by Norse mythology? Let's begin by defining mythology. The term mythology refers to the myths or traditional stories of a particular religiously or spiritually connected group. Folklore, on the other hand, is mostly synonymous with mythology, but specifically the stories passed down for generations by word of mouth, or in other words, oral tradition. I chose to compare the Viking and Sami beliefs because I think the outcome could provide some insight into where these stories came from. Did these two groups share anything? Do you think they would agree with each other at all? One of the most common mythological conundrums is the issue of creation. The Norse stories say that in the beginning of things, there were two worlds, one of ice and snow and the other of heat and fire. Other than these two worlds, nothing else existed. There was just a great abyss called Kuninga Gap. By the continual process of heating and cooling, Condensation from the cool world formed a frost in the great abyss and built up over time. By some chance, or perhaps by the will of the so-called uncreated, the frost took the form of a giant by the name of Emir. As Emir wanders around the abyss, he f comes across Adumla, the cow, who was created from the same frost as he. He feeds himself from her udder as she licks the salty ice. As Adumla licks, the head of the god Buri, also known as the producer, appears. Emir sleeps while Adumla does this, and from the perspiration under his arms are born other frost giants. When the god Buri is fully emerged from the ice, he produces more gods as well. Three sons in particular, Odin, Vili, and V, are the most powerful. These three sons set out to defeat the growing race of frost giants, who are their only competition in the world. They attack Ymir, since he is their leader, and from his flesh create the world, using his blood for the seas, bones for hills, hair for plants, and skull for the heavens. The sun and moon also played a key part in the story, supposedly drawn in chariots across the sky by the gods after their victory. The Sami also were interested in how the world was created. But as with many oral traditions, my research led me to several slightly varying stories of creation from the Sami. However, they all had a very common theme, that life began with the sun. Beyond the moon, sun, and stars as we know them today, lived the son of the sun, who sought his father and set out with the other giants in search of his house. Instead, they were stopped outside the gates by a female giant, one of the few in existence. The son of the sun and the giantess blended their blood to join in matrimony. However, the other giants and the sons of the sun became angry and chased the couple to the world we know today, where the giantess bore the ancestors of the Sami. The sun still keeps watch over the people today, and all of nature can call the sun its father and the earth its mother. So again we ask, why does it matter? These stories are so different. How can we take anything away from them? Are there really any similarities? Well, yes, there are. The Sami and Norse myths of creation share some significant similarities. The first, of course, being the connection to nature. Both stories describe the significance of the land and elements around them. The Norse believe their gods and ancestors to have been descended from the ice while the Sami believes they have, and all of nature descended from the sun. This focus on the natural world reflects how these people drew from their surroundings in forming their beliefs. In turn, both groups also began a more polytheistic belief system, naming a god for every aspect of their daily life and for every aspect of nature. 
I mentioned the god Odin earlier, but perhaps more familiar to you are the other Norse gods such as Thor or Loki. These many gods had a particular role in nature, and the people blessed the appropriate god depending on the situation. Sami folktales often bear information about life. Many of their stories depict the best way to migrate a herd of reindeer or hunt. Sami folklore and Norse mythology were more than just a set of beliefs. There are ways of sharing the secrets of their trade, a way of passing down advice to the next generation. I also found it fascinating how both groups went about worship and the tools or art they created for their ritualistic services. The Sami drum used by the Noadi is often round and has imprints or designs in a circular pattern around the drum. It was also common for the Sami to sit in a circle when performing rituals or performing a dance. Looking at Norse mythology and artwork, I found that they had a common theme of circular forms. Much of their artwork and sculptures reflected a common theme of circles or round shapes. From round shields on mighty warriors to circular patterns of drawings, circles seem to be a sacred shape for the Norse. In H. R. Davidson's book, Viking and Norse Mythology, he describes the worship of the god of the sky, whose power was manifested in the eternal round of the sun. So what do these small similarities tell us about the Sami? For one, we find that the Sami and Norse people had very little overall communication, but bore similar tales because of what they witnessed in everyday life. Their simple views of nature go beyond worship, but show a deep spiritual connection to the land. Clearly the elements in Northern Europe played a significant part in their lives, or they wouldn't be a part of these myths. The connection to circles is less clearly understood, but I predict that stems from the shape of the sun, the ultimate force which brings the day in the morning and takes it away at night. There is plenty more to be analyzed, but for now I think it is fair to say that these two groups had a lot in common through their beliefs in the power of nature. This can even still be seen today in the Sami's passion for maintaining their homes and preserving the natural lands in Sami. Clearly the Sami's folklore have continued to have a place in the people's hearts, so the real question is, why not learn more about it? Oh, yeah.